Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the number one Vicekins fan extraordinaire, Adam Boyer, back today with the first drumroll mock round draft of 2023. This, we're doing just the Washington Commanders mock draft. We will do as we do every year. Um, we are going to do a uh, full NFL mock draft, at least one of those, eventually probably do multiple, probably do multiple of these, but I was trying to think of a video idea, and I was like, you know what, it's not too early to go ahead and do a mock round draft for the Commanders, so let's get into it. Uh, it is worth noting before we get started that I used PFF's draft simulator, and so I made my picks based off of this. Now, starting round one, number 16 overall, not a big surprise here, the Washington Commanders take Joey Porter Jr., cornerback out of Penn State. Uh, he has really good length and reach. That was a uh, a big thing with Scout is that he has he can reach in, break up passes. He has great length, long strides, and he can cover pretty well. There's a couple flaws in his game, but it's stuff that can be worked out with good coaching. Um, he is widely considered to be a top three cornerback selection and a uh, draft that could pretty well be pretty cornerback heavy. Um, wouldn't be surprised to, to see him taking the top 20. Obviously, I have the Commanders take him at 16 here. Uh, he did have a pretty rough start to his college career. Uh, 2019, he was a freshman. Uh, didn't play a lot. Did not play very well. 2020, similar story. Played some more. Didn't play great. 2021, though, he really broke out. He had a uh, really good season. I should say pretty good. It wasn't great, but it was a pretty good season. 2022, though, was great. He didn't have any interceptions, but it was mostly because Cordax were kind of scared to throw his way. He locked down some of the uh, game's top receivers, and so that is one of the reasons he um, uh, is going to be drafted so high, in my opinion. Um, yeah, he got better and better each year, and this year he's entered a very low rating against opposing Cordax when targeted. Round two, number 47 overall, we have Luke Whipler. I think it's pronounced Whipler, not Whipler, but I'm going to say Luke Whipler, center out of Ohio State. Ohio State has produced some very good centers in recent NFL history, such as Corey Lindsley and a lot of other guys that have been drafted, maybe even if they didn't pan out as superstars in the NFL, they did you know, start for a while. And this is another guy, center from Ohio State, Luke Whipler. He is an excellent pass blocker. Um, and he really does it all. Over the past two seasons, he's surrendered only 14 quarterback hurries, one quarterback hit, and one sack. So he's been really impressive in the pass blocking department. And the great thing is he's six foot three, 300 pounds. So he's a big, bulky dude. But he's also, he does have good size, but he's also pretty agile and athletic. And that's one of the things that benefits him, not only in pass blocking, but also run blocking. He can get downfield and make big pancake blocks and stuff like that. So yeah, he's a really well-rounded prospect, both in pass blocking and run blocking. I could see him potentially being taken in the first round, but he fell to 47 to the commanders here. And of course, you know, we've had kind of a center carousel going on. We've had guys like Tyler Larson starting for us at center when really we, um, yeah, just haven't had any great option there because Chase Roulier, he's decent when he's healthy, but he's had a lot of trouble staying healthy. So I think the commanders would either cut or trade him away this offseason, draft Whipler to be his replacement. Round three, number 97 overall, we have Dorian Williams, linebacker out of Tulane. Now, this was a toss-up pretty much between him and Ivan Pace Jr., but here's the deal. Um, he's a little bit more well-rounded, in my opinion. One of the big uh, questions about Pace is his he's a little bit undersized. I think he's like 230 pounds, I believe I saw, and I know I saw he's only five foot ten. so that's definitely a disadvantage in Pace's um, against Pace. However, um, it's not just that. I think Williams is a bit more well-rounded, like I said, and definitely in pass coverage he's better, and that's one area the commanders have struggled in recent years is pass coverage. Run stopping and rushing the quarterback, they've done pretty well past several seasons, but they've been a little bit shaky in pass coverage, which is why I have them taking Williams here out of Tulane, probably to be an eventual replacement for David Mayo, I think would be the goal. Um, he, in his senior year, he did record two interceptions, a couple pass breakups. He was... You know, he has some uh, some problems, a few areas he's struggling in, um, such as iffy tackling. That's not quite on point, but that can get worked out, I think. And, you know, eventually we're hoping he'd be the starter. But uh, for now, as soon as he's drafted, he'd probably just be a guy to sub in and out, a substitution guy. Uh, rounds four through seven, in which we had a fourth-round pick, a fifth-round pick, two sixths, and a seventh-round pick. Uh, I'm just going to lift list off the... Uh, 
names. We're not going to get too in depth, uh, deep into their profiles. Uh, round four, I had them taking Valami. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Valami Fehoko. I'm assuming he's a brother of Simi Fehoko, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, he's an edge rusher out of San Jose. Um, I think they're going to want a guy to be a complement in the pass rushing department. We're going to end up letting some guys like Casey Tuhill and Jan Smith Williams go soon. Monta Sweat's got a contract here coming up, so uh, they want a guy in depth for uh, depth. I'm sure they get Fehoko. Uh, round five, they take Jackson Kirkland, guard out of Washington. Uh, right guard, especially, was an area of weakness for us this year. They get that addressed here, and, and uh, like I said, he is out of Washington State. So uh, I guess there's not really any relation there. I was thinking. When I saw this, I was like, oh, he'd stay close to home. That's nice. But I'm assuming it's talking about Washington State and uh, not Washington, D.C. So never mind to that. But either way, I have them drafting Kirkland here. Uh, round six, first pick, I have them taking Korderak out of Houston, Clayton Toon. Very likely, you know, these later round picks don't end up working out. But a depth guy at Korderak, we saw how we can cycle through Korderaks, especially this season. So they end up getting Toon just as a depth guy. Maybe he develops into a decent backup. Obviously, you're hoping a starter for everyone you draft, but... Maybe he develops into a career backup or so. Round six, another area of need, tight end. We draft McAllen Castles, tight end out of UC Davis. I've never heard of UC Davis. Um, it might be the first guy ever drafted out of their college and program history. If so, you know, congratulations to them. Um, but yeah, we needed a uh, tight end, and so we get him in round six here. And then lastly, our last pick, number 247, I believe, round seven, we take Tavion Thomas, halfback out of Utah. Commanders have a habit of drafting guys they don't really need, but just to add them as depth. And so um, I do have them doing that here with Tavion Thomas out of Utah to add a little more, a few more players, a little more uh, depth to that halfback room. So, uh, basically that's it. I think this is a little bit of a shorter video. I'm not positive about that. I don't see the time currently. I guess I'll check it when I'm done editing. There was one big mistake I made in here, and I have to go back and edit that out. That took a while. So, uh, yeah, you're getting this a little bit raw. But um, So, I hope you do enjoy. Let me know what you think. What are the biggest areas of need the commanders have, and who do you think they should draft to fill those needs? Let me know in the comments below. Should they take a quarter act in the draft? I don't know. I want you all to let me know so I can have your opinion. Always read in the comments. As always, folks, don't forget to subscribe if you do enjoy. I am the Vice Guns fan. Thank you for 500 subscribers once again. I'm out of here. See y'all later.